Welcome to Gary Clark Tech and the start of a brand new series in which we're going to create a PHP Composer package. As you probably know, most modern PHP projects are made up of lots of individual packages which you can require in your Composer JSON file. So we're going to go ahead and create our own and then we'll push that to GitHub. We'll also push it to Packagist and that means that other developers will be able to go and search Packagist, find our package and use it in their own projects. Does that sound cool? Let's do this. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. This is the project that we're going to use. I've kept it nice and simple. It's really just a couple of files because the whole point of this course is for once it's not about writing code, it's more about packaging code up, making it available for other people to use in their projects. So, like I say, it's really just a couple of files. And what this is, it's just a tool which I created for myself, uh, a previous job, and it was for monitoring bottlenecks in code. So when you're iterating over loops or uh, performing iterative tasks, such as going over lines in a file, I wanted to be able to um, sniff out any bottlenecks there, as well as be able to find any other uh, bottlenecks in other parts of the code. So I'll let you run through it in your own time. Uh, we may demo using this in one of the projects that I pull it into. That'll be pretty cool. So we'll probably do that. But like I say, one file here, it's called performance counter and it will just count in milliseconds how long it takes to iterate through an iteration, uh, one single iteration of a loop. And then there's also a test. So it's called performance test and then we have a performance Oh, sorry, performance counter, and then we have a performance counter test, which just tests all the methods, all just unit tests there. The other file is the composer JSON. I've just got it into this state that it's in at the moment, just for my development of the performance counter. But when we run composer init in the next recording, then this is going to change quite a lot because there are certain pieces of detail which you need to have on here in order for this package to be able to be found and installed by other packages. Let's go ahead and make this into a Git repository. First thing I'll show you that I have created a Git ignore up front. So certain things which I don't want to put into version control, I can just list the files and folders on here and that means that Git will ignore them. So good name for a file. Right, in order to create a Git repository or in order to make this a Git repository, we just need to say Git init. Okay, and then it tells you it has initialized an empty Git repository. Let's run Git status and see what we're playing with here. And so these are the items which it is proposing to commit to version control to commit to git when I run git add and git commit. I've seen something there that I don't want to be there and that is this ds store. So I'm going to add this to git ignore. So I'll copy that. This is a Mac specific thing I think. Um, I don't want it in my repository. So let's go and run git status again. Okay, good. So I'm happy with all these. Git ignore. Yes, I do want that in version control. I want my composer JSON, also my composer lock and my source folder, my test folder. So I'm happy with that. I can say git add and then dot for git add all. And then if I run git status again, so I run git status quite a lot. It's a bit of a, uh, just a control thing for me. And these are the files and folders which are going to be committed when I say git commit. And we'll just call this uh, initial commit. So hyphen m means I'm going to type a message. Initial commit. Okay, and that's good. I'm happy with that. What we need to do now is go over to GitHub, create an empty repo there, and then we're going to match the two together and push to that repo on GitHub. Here I am on my GitHub account. I'm going to create a new repository by clicking the new button here and it'll ask for a repository name so I'm just going to call this performance counter so performance hyphen counter tells me that that name is available description and so I'll just call this a development tool for monitoring application performance and debugging bottlenecks obviously I'm going to keep this public because I want other people to be able to use it in their projects 
had a readme. I really should do that, but for the purposes of this, because it's a tutorial, we're not going to get bogged down in that stuff. I'm going to try and stay as focused as possible. We've already got a git ignore in my local repo, so I don't need to do that. And so I'm just going to go ahead and create this repository. Okay, perfect. And so once you've done that, it will then give you a few options. So what are our options? The one we want is this one here, push an existing repository from the command line. So all I need to do is copy these commands. I can just click on that in order to do that, but I'm probably going to do them manually and then go back to our local repo and just run these. Okay, let's do this one by one. Git remote add origin, git at github Gary Clark performance counter. Okay, so here we're saying that we want to add this repo that we see here as the remote origin. So we'll hit go on that. This next command here is one which GitHub suggests and we're gonna go ahead and do it and that is to rename the master branch to main. So most people are doing this these days so let's just go ahead and hit go on that one. And then our final step is to push this up to origin. So git push hyphen u means upstream. So our remote origin is our upstream origin main hit go on that and on my computer I've got it set up to take a password from me when I do this you probably won't have it set up to do it this way on yours but that's okay so I'm just going to enter my password and away we go it's sent all my files up to the remote origin and so if I go back to the repo in github performance counter refresh and so now, as you can see, we've got all my files. We've got my source folder, tests, git ignore, composer JSON, and composer lock. Okay, so that's a pretty good start. What we're gonna have a look at in the next one is we're gonna run a command called composer init, and then that will prompt us to fill in some details for our composer JSON file, and that will be able to make our package discoverable by other packages. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. And also, if you're interested in my full-length courses, then make sure you check out my site at garyclark.tech. I'll leave a link on the screen and in the description.